Okay, good evening everybody. This is the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, December 12th, 2016. Um, we're actually going to take one item out of order uh, because of the way the Novus was set up. Um, number one in our hearts, I want to thank my colleague, Mr. Grilly, um, who brought this to the Board's attention. Uh, he has a proclamation and some very kind and well-earned remarks for uh, Elsie Fury. I, I just wanted to say, if, something very briefly because I'm afraid if I go too long in the tooth it's probably all in the proclamation but honest to goodness swear to God in the Bible when I first uh, came to Arlington and I was just a bracket PTO parent and stayed away from politics as much as I could my uh, first uh, involvement um, was with LC Fury and then the East Arlington Residents Association and I sort of um, cut my tooth and uh, really got involved in uh, the town of Arlington and community activism and really was inspired by Elsie because um, from, from the first time that I met her I was hooked si signed me up and I was really um, impressed at how um, knowledgeable she was uh, her legal background and one of the things I can tell you Elsie that you gave me I never met the man but I feel as though I know Herb Myers um, and everything that the two of you and others accomplished. And the last thing I'll say about Elsie is one of the things I think is sort of a hallmark of what she taught me is um, you never do anything alone. Um, if, if you have the passion, you have the commitment, and you can get others uh, the information and get involved with you, you can get really great things done, but you, you never do it by yourself. Um, so, but with that, I'd like to turn this over to Mr. Greeley. Uh, thank you, Diane. So, a few years back, I was talking to a new town meeting member, and the town meeting member said to me, do you ever watch a selectman's meeting? And I was <laughs> like, well, you know, every now and then. He said, I watched one the other night. You should have seen Elsie Fiore really giving it to the selectman. That <laughs> I said, would you like to see the scars? <laughs> so we do have this proclamation put together, and this is, uh, no proclamation could ever sum up a person. Uh, but did I call on you to give a speech yet, Elsie? No, no, come on, come on. no, no, Elsie, Elsie, I'm kidding. Come on forward, come on. Come on, take your place at the microphone where you have been so often before. Uh, those of you who haven't uh, been with us before, these proclamations date all the way back to really the 1600s. When a board of selectmen or town council or whatever would make some motion, the next day the town crier would give a proclamation as to what had happened at that meeting. So they're written in the old English, a lot of whereases are now therefore. So you are going to do the whereases for us and I will do the now therefores. So here's a practice. First of all, as I point at you, you say, Whereas. Elsie Constant Thornton was born in Quincy, Massachusetts on November 22nd, 1926, and recently celebrated her 90th birthday. She had four brothers and one sister, and Whereas. Elsie was married to Joseph A. Fiore for 49 years, moved to Arlington in 1949, and purchased her current home on Mott Street. They had four sons, David, Carl, Peter, and Russell, Peter's with us, eight grandchildren and three great-grandchildren, and whereas. in 28 years, this is my favorite whereas of all. Elsie and her sister Val were members of the USO and entertained troops during World War II, dancing on naval war warships docked in Boston and Quincy. I just love that. And Whereas. Elsie graduated from Quincy High School, Hickox uh, Secretarial School, UMass Boston. While at UMass, she once loaned Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders money so he could take the MBTA home. And Whereas. Elsie had a distinguished career as a legal secretary at such prestigious law firms as Ropes and Gray, Hale and Door, Hill and Barlow, and others, and worked for a Chief Justice of the Supreme Judicial Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and... Whereas... Elsie, now don't lose steam on me, hang in there. Elsie first joined Arlington's town meeting in 1962 and has served for 54 consecutive years, currently the longest serving member of that body, and... 
Whereas. Elsie at times has been called upon to play squaw sachem in differing town functions. She was chosen since she exemplifies the qualities of Squaw Sachem, leadership, determination, and conservation of natural resources, and whereas, whereas. one more after this, Elsie, over her 54 years, has been an outstanding contributor to the town of Arlington as a founder, member, chairman, teacher, measurer of wood and bark, along with different committees, boards, neighborhoods, and schools, and Whereas, Elsie Constance Fiore has been recognized for her contributions to Arlington as an unsung heroine, person of the year, and as a legendary local. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, do congratulate and thank Elsie for her many contributions to the town and in recognition of her many achievements do hereby declare this 12th day of December of 2016 to be Elsie Fiore Day throughout the town and ask all citizens to pay heed thereto. Elsie Fiore. I certainly am, and the one thing that I'm uh, happiest about is that I didn't have to remember all the things that I did to tell you. <laughs> you told me, and I really uh, appreciate uh, what you've done for me here. So I'm going to have to sit down before I fall down. Well, well before you do, by any chance, are there any moves left from the USO days? Uh, <laughs> No, but uh, we did, you know, we, we were only you know, teenagers and we danced with a group. Our dance teacher had decided she'd start a little group when the war came. And uh, so we not only danced on the ships that came into Boston Harbor, but we also danced like at Camp Edwards and Fort Devens and, you know, other places. So uh, we had really a good time, you know, and, and uh, it's worthwhile remembering that we did that. Thank you for all you've done for Arlington, Elsie. Okay. Thank you, Elsie. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll return to the agenda. And now our treasurer has the Thanks, <laughs> pleasure of following <laughs> Elsie Fiore for uh, discussion regarding borrowing of $4 million for the Thompson School Construction Th Thank project. you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Before I actually get to the topic at hand, if I could just ask why Mr. Greeley did not put in that Elsie Fiore took several boards of selectmen to task, <laughs> <laughs> as well as individual members, myself included, on more than one occasion. Elsie, congratulations. Um, Madam Chairman, members of the board, I'm, I'm here to just inform the board uh, that the town will be borrowing $4 million uh, as voted by the special town meeting of October 2016 for the purpose of construction at the Thompson School. Uh, the $4 million will be issued as a short-term note, 12 months, a bond anticipation note. Uh, we will not be having the note rated, Mr. Greeley. Uh, <laughs> the reason for that is we will actually save more money by not having the, the, the ban rated then and, and avoid paying the borrowing costs for that uh, as opposed to uh, saving on several basis points with respect to an interest rate savings. Uh, I will be back before the board at your very next meeting to approve the sale of that note. So that will be taking place uh, this week and we will have the money in hand. Um, we're moving this expeditiously because the job's already started and better to spend uh, money that we have authorization to borrow than doing an internal borrowing. So if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Move Mr. approval. Uh, early start next week. Early start next week. Yep, not 715. And Mrs. Kropelka is saying that she's going to be down there with the shovel, I think. <laughs> OK, move approval by Mr. Greeley, seconded by second. Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion or questions? 
If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. We'll see you shortly. I thank the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have our consent agenda. Minutes of meetings, uh, November 28, 2016, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license, December 17th, 2016, at the Whittemo Robbins House for a private event. Jeff Perkle, a request special one-day beer and wine license, December 17th, 2016, at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. Hillary Danen, request contractor drain layer license from Kylie Excavating out of Waltham, Mass., from Neshoba Paving Company, Inc., out of Westford, Mass., and from PV Barone Corporation out of Winthrop, Mass. Move approval. Move approval by Mr. Burns, seconded by... Second. Mr. Dunn, is anybody here... <coughs> God bless, bless you. you. Excuse me. ...to speak to any of those events? Um, any questions, clarifications? If not, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Dunn, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. My phone says 729. I think... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Should I... I think we can get... You can... By the time By we the get started, okay, we'll I'll, exactly yeah, I'll say it really so. Uh, we now are going to proceed to the public hearing. It's a discussion and vote, property tax classification, tax rate, 7.30 p.m. If um, I call on Mary Winston O'Connor. Madam Chairwoman, members of the board, good evening. With me this evening is Kevin Feely, a member of the Board of Assessors. And I don't know if all of you have met Dana Mann, the data collector that uh, the board hired in June of 2016 that the department hired. Um, Mr. Greeley is a little under the weather tonight and I believe you know Mr. Tierney is out on medical leave. Um, you have uh, your booklets, I believe, uh, and uh, we can go through that. Um, the first page uh, is the levy limit and uh, it sets out how the levy limit is determined, including the additional 2.5% uh, and, and the new growth. Now, I want to ca caution you that the Department of Revenue has yet to approve the growth tax dollars and the tax rate, so they are estimated we're awaiting the approval. The second page of your booklet uh, contains the residential factor computation, and as you can see, the town of Arlington, 94.1390% is residential, 5.8610 is commercial, industrial, and personal property. That has not changed much uh, over the years. Uh, as you know, the Board of Selectmen have the ability to increase the CIP, the commercial, industrial, personal property classes, up to 150% of their share of the levy if you decide to uh, do classification. The next page, um, we always provide you um, with uh, what would happen if you did um, a vote classification, how it would impact uh, the tax rate, how it would impact the CIP tax rate holders. Any questions as to those pages at this point? Uh, the next page shows the tax rate um, that has been app uh, approved from 1929 to the present. Right now, we're estimating, subject to DOR approval, a tax rate of $12.56, $12.56. Uh, and the next several pages break down the values by class type. Um, and it includes the breakdown by single families, two families, condominiums, commercial property, and the like, so that you can see um, how we get to the values. Uh, there is a, a correction to be made. Um, if you go to the page, there was apparently a mathematical error uh, when this was put together, the booklet. And we promise you next year we'll have Mr. Tierney number these pages, mm -hmm. um, which would make a lot of sense. But if you go to the page that says tax rate components, fiscal year 2013 to fiscal year 2017, and uh, five lines up from the bottom on the far right, the total of assessed value percentage increase is 5.15%, not 4.90. And finally, the last page shows the average taxes for 2012 to 2017 on single family homes. Uh, and you can see we've used Arlington, Belmont, Belmont and Lexington, their tax rates have not yet been determined, uh, and Winchester. Uh, and we estimate that the increase um, in uh, the average single family home tax bill will be about $309 a year. Any questions? Any questions, Mr. Dunn? Thank you. Uh, so if uh, DOR comes back and says there's something not right, what happens? 
Uh, we will have to work very quickly um, to, to address that, but we've never had that issue. Okay. Because we need we to We fully this. expect that this is going to be approved. And because our deadline is end of year? It's before the end of the year, correct. Okay. The tax bills have to go out bef uh, before December 30th. And I think Mr. Gilligan is intending uh, right after Christmas, assuming approval. Mr. Gilligan's in shock at the question. <laughs> <laughs> We don't see that as, as a likelihood. Okay. Because, you know, the Department of Revenue was involved in the process as we go along. Thank you. Um, which of my colleagues would like to set the tax rate at Mr. Greeley? Yeah, so I move that we um, set, a, uh, set the tax rate in a classification of one. So the tax rate would be 1256 for residential and commercial. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. Um, any further questions, comments? Um, we wish Paul a speedy recovery and look forward to seeing him soon. And he's definitely in our thoughts and we're pleased by his progress and how well he's doing. So Thank you. on a motion by Mr. Greeley. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> any dis it's <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Any, any discussion, Mr. James? Thank you, Gordon Jamison, 163 situate and a town meeting member from precinct 12. Um, first, I hope Paul and um, Bobby are feeling better and uh, had a couple quick questions and then I wanted to discuss tax policy um, just as an introductory discussion for the board. Um, uh, what was the new growth this year, Mary? Mm -hmm. A million dollars. A million dollars, okay. So we're, we're continuing to outperform our estimate of six four fifty, okay. And... Um, I noticed that the tax rate went up three hundred dollars, which is is in, isn't that more? And what was it last year? It seems higher than last year. Did we add something to the to the? It was one hundred eighty-seven dollars. Did we add some schools to the mix? No, that, that's it. That's okay. it. Okay. I just don't know that they're picking it up at home. Um, okay. And um, and uh, just to, for the board, don't you have to also vote the debt shift tonight? Or is that not? Not on the agenda. I thought we did that. Okay. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll just hand up my hand up and go through my discussion. So this will make it easier. I think while you're passing that out, uh, Gordon, um, by setting the rate, I believe we're implicitly doing all of the, the components. Hmm. Thank you. So um, as, as the board knows and as the board of assessors also knows, um, I consider this to be, um, and p folks at home should consider this to be one of the most important meetings we have the uh, hearings we have all year because it does address the tax rate of the town. Um, on the handout, I've uh, listed um, the four ways um, one can, um, for discussion of things that, that contribute to how we um, administer the tax rate in town. The first one is abatements. There's a variety of abatements the town has accepted through Mass General Law. <coughs> and I have no different, no um, comment other than those, other than that's one of the ways that we often um, make um, taxes more amenable to senior citizens and veterans. The MWRA debt shift is that part of your water bill, if you're not a nonprofit, of course, that you pay in your taxes. And a number of years ago, we capped that at $5.92 million. Um, I think it might be time to consider with some of the upcoming capital plans we have to consider whether we want to move this back into the water bill completely. We're one of only two towns to do this, if I understand correctly. That could be done immediately, could be done with the board, um, to the consternation of the board of assessors, because they'd have to refigure their numbers. Or it could be done on a gradual basis over a period of years. The next thing on the list is residential exemption which I recall uh, when I first started talking about the debt shift many years ago, uh, former selectman Lyons brought that up, and we have not heard about that from the assessors or the board since. This is a, um, 
an exemption that, that applies to resident occupied housing. Uh, and it is in existence in Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, I think in Medford, I know in Waltham. And um, Arlington is uh, eligible for a residential exemption of up to 20% of the assessed value of the home. So you don't, you don't um, collect fewer taxes, you just redistribute that. There's a worksheet that the, um, is online that I found, and that would mean that people, assuming I'm correct, uh, re resident owned and occupied housing and the, the numbers from the state com, uh, correct for people that don't and do occupy, um, at about $960,000, you'd pay the same. Below that, on a sliding scale, you'd pay some less. And on, on above that, you'd pay, pay some more. So the residential um, part is the same. Um, I have a question for the, the chair of the board of assessors. Does that only apply, or does that rejigger the commercial too? Okay. Okay, so, um, and then there was, there's the factor that we just discussed, which Arlington, uh, the board has uh, for many years kept as a factor of one, and we've discussed whether um, we might increase that incrementally. So as I mentioned, I have no, prop, no issue with the abatements. The debt shift, I think we might wanna consider going forward as we plan overall tax policy and, and impact on our uh, citizens um, town-wide as well as seniors and people of lower incomes, moving the debt shift back into the water bill. That way, everyone pays the same cost for water every drop. Right now, nonprofits pay only the metered rate, and people then pay a different rate based upon the value of their home once this is factored in. I think we ought to look at the residential exemption. And then on the, on the factor, um, it, it, it the, the online spreadsheet calculates what the tax rate would be on that, um, the remaining of the residential minus the 20%. And that comes out to be about 14.6 or something with a tax rate of 14.4, which is this current year, current last year's rate. Um, and then I would recommend uh, considering not only moving the debt shift over time so that we pay the same for every drop, giving the residential exemption so that people have some uh, people of lower income and older residents who have lower income have some uh, um, protection from our rising tax rates and then set the, the factor so that whatever the effective rate is on the residential is also the effective rate on the um, commercial, which would be the, the um, same as having a, fact, a, a net factor of one, which is the net rate on the residential exemption. So that's just my thoughts. I think it's something, obviously, you could obviously do it tonight, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking not. <laughs> well, wait. First, we uh, argue, Mr. Dunn. So uh, on the debt, uh, comment on two of those. So on the debt shift is one that I'm definitely interested in moving. To, I think the right time to do that is actually when we do the water rate and the water budget. And so uh, several years ago, I was ver uh, very interested in doing it aggressively, and uh, I was convinced not to because the water rates were going up so much, not because our exp because of like the cost that we control, but because of the costs from the MWRA. And uh, that last year uh, has abated, and that rate, uh, and so I look forward to making a change on the water. Uh, the debt shift this coming July or June when we set the set the water rate uh, on the residential exception um, I'm definitely willing to look at it more I'm also concerned I, I also think about the impact that it has on renters and so I worry about that as well but that one I know considerably less than I do about the debt but it I would look be to the chair for who's going to speak it next. would be, a, uh, would uh, be wait, wait, I'm gonna see if we can get everyone else who raised their hands and then if we can have one um, Mr. Carroll and then yeah, I just wanted to point out, Gordon, that actually in the um, the board's goals that we adopted this year, we actually did explicitly add in an investigation of, of looking at, at um, uh, well, let me just read the language, review the progress made re regarding the recently adopted water sewer rate structure and billing plan and also investigate reduction of MWRA debt shift as a means of offsetting tax bill impacts of debt exclusions. We put that in our goals this year explicitly. So I don't read I, those every month. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's only once a year. <laughs> yeah. um, Mr. Greeley? Yeah, and, you know, in terms of the, whether it's the, uh, the classification one, uh, you know, only being able to go to one and a half percent for the six, five, what did you tell me, say, five percent businesses? Yeah. In, yeah, five point eight. Uh, with mostly mom and pop shops, meaning no offense to uh, those businesses in Arlington, as we all know about the uh, vacancies. But, uh, Madam Chair, I wonder whether we could hear from uh, Mary or Kevin if they want to uh, comment on Definitely, the, if I could. Okay. Um, if I could call Mr. Chapelain first and then. No. One of you give me a nod, <laughs> Mr. Chapelain. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I bumped him down. If I may, I, I would just like to address uh, some of the points that Mr. Jamison made and um, uh, Mr. Kira and Mr. Dunn already addressed some of them as well. Uh, first, on the point of the new growth and the new growth being a million dollars this year and the prior uh, figure that we had estimated across the long-range plan being $450,000 at our first long-range planning committee meeting earlier this fall, uh, we did roll out a projection that included bumping that up to the 10-year average, uh, which was about $650,000 and then slowly actually rolling it down by $50,000 increments year over year to hedge against uh, future downturns in the, uh, the recession. So we are starting to move uh, in that direction. Um, uh, look, looking again at, at retrospective uh, data. On the point of abatements. And in, and, and in some ways, um, the uh, extra money in the uh, finance committee uh, over annual uh, reserve fund also addresses the issue, but it, albeit indirectly. Not that's not entirely accurate, but, but uh, I, I don't I won't debate you. Right, uh, no, right, right actually, now. can we just let the, every speaker say their thing and then I'll give you one more crack at it? Okay. If, you, do you need, if you don't have, I'm not being sarcastic. If you want to write something down, I, I'm not trying to make you forget anything. But, Mr. Chaplain, uh, on the on the point of abatements and exemptions uh, for our seniors, veterans, uh, the blind. Uh, Health and Human Services is actually just now starting to kick off a process working with the Council on Aging and the Veterans uh, Service Director to put together some proposals for this board to consider to bring to town meeting next year to try to maximize the offsets that we can bring to those populations uh, on the tax rate. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Mr. Kira already brought up what I was going to mention about the debt shift, though I would say tonight is certainly not the night to back away from the debt shift given that when you set the tax rate in December, you're actually setting the tax rate for a budget that was approved by town meeting in the spring. So this is setting figures to pay the bills that have already basically been agreed to in the spring. So I think it's great for us to talk about it. The board's already committed to analyze it, but now wouldn't be the time to back away uh, given that the budget is, is in mid-year. Um, and I will say <clears throat> back when Mr. Bob Greeley was uh, the director of assessing and not on the board, I know he had shown me some documentation and some analysis in regards to the residential exemption, and it didn't necessarily show that, that it was of great uh, benefit to pursue it uh, in Arlington at the time, but I think it would be a worthwhile thing for, I, and I'd be happy to, to speak with the Board of Assessors and see if we can take another look at that analysis. Thank you. Do either, any of our colleagues from the Board of Assessors would like to give the opportunity, want to come up to the microphone? And well, the only, Mr. Greeley asked, I mean, we prepared for you the, the sheet that shows the impact on the commercial properties by doing classification. Um, it's, pr it's pretty significant. Um, so that, that's a decision from, by the Board of Selectmen. Um, we're not Somerville, we're not Burlington, right. we're not Cambridge. Right. That's the reality and we're not Waltham. Um, so it has a significant impact. Any, anything you'd like to wrap us up with on this? Yeah, so um, <coughs> as I believe it's the, the board's um, of assessors uh, practice, once those are approved, they'll be on the website, Mary. Yes. Okay, the report. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's part of the, is it part of the Reslectman's? Okay, much, yes. much even better. Um, <coughs> uh, thank you, Adam, for your comments. I think I... Um, the residential exemption actually it can be quite substantial for the um, the lower value homes mm -hmm. uh, on the amount of taxes that it that it um, reduces. Um, I can I'll try to remember to send you this spreadsheet. It was actually quite easy. You just put in twenty percent and get the numbers. Um, uh, Mr. Greeley, I think your um, question's been answered uh, primarily by the board. Um, one has to remember that they discuss a one point five, but one can. Uh, choose anything in between and my proposal in conjunction with the potential for a residential exemption 
would be that whatever to the best whatever the, that comes out to the the rate for the non exempted residential part that you um, set the factor such that it makes the that rate equal to the commercial rate. Okay, thank you. Okay, because we we are going to discuss this in the future. Which which this year would be about yeah. fourteen point something. So it would be everything above twenty percent. That's 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 uh, um, would be tax exempt in the residential. Uh, if you uh, if you occupy, <coughs> would be at that rate, and then un resident occupied would be at that rate and all the commercial. So it seemed to be like an, an integrated thing that I hadn't thought of before and we hadn't discussed. So since you're sort of in the process of thinking forward about this, I thought this would be a, a good day to uh, bring that up to the board. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And uh, thanks for the information about the debt shift. And obviously the abatements is, uh, and the abatements and exemptions that already exist, uh, as I mentioned, are um, fine and dandy. and it's, Making, the, making people aware of those, I think, is an important part of the uh, Council on Aging's work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for not double checking. Anyone else here who would like to speak at the public hearing? Not? Thank you to everyone, and we'll be hearing about this in the future. <laughs> um, next, we have. We haven't actually voted. Have to vote it. What? We have to oh, vote I it. thought we did vote it. No. Okay, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, really? seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Apologize. Okay, next we will go to under appointments, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Diane, excuse me. You just have to sign. I know, but we can keep going. Right, well, he's oh, do walking in front. He's going to sign it now. Aye. Sure. It's just one place. Yes. <coughs> Can, should we keep going? Yeah, yes. I think we yeah, should. Yeah, yeah. We, I, we don't have to wait. Yeah. No. Right. Um, agenda item 10, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture, term to expire January 31st, 2020. Stephen Polter -Zer Polter Zersky. Is uh, Stephen here to help me with his last name? Sure. Come up to the microphone. I apologize. I usually try to get these in advance. Name and address for the record. It's no, it's no problem. You're not the first to struggle with this. <laughs> How uh, do I say it correctly? Polterzitsky. Polterzitsky. Thank you. Indeed. Um, you're here for an appointment on the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. If you want to just give a brief uh, synopsis of um, how we're fortunate enough to have you here um, as someone hopefully who will be appointed, what brought you to this particular committee or any, anything you'd like to highlight? Sure. Uh, I've been, uh, I'm a longtime resident of Arlington. I've lived here 25 years, uh, and I'm a, a lifelong um, aficionado of the arts. I, I'm a practitioner. I'm a photographer. I, I show, in any show I, that is willing to accept my works, um, and, it, and I've uh, also practiced in, in many other media. Uh, but uh, it's not just as an artist, it's just as a citizen. I'm very interested in the, uh, the role of arts and culture in, in enriching uh, the lives of our uh, citizens of the community. And I would love to have a role in making arts and culture what makes Arlington distinctive and a place that everyone wants to come live, work, and visit. And uh, that's my vision. Thank so you. thanks for the opportunity. Move approval. Second. Second. Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Dunn and everybody else up here. <laughs> <laughs> Any further comments? Uh, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Look Thank you. To seeing Thank in the you future. very much. Next, we have an appointment to the Arlington Cultural Council, term to expire December 31st, 2019. Kimberly Harding. You can just say your name and address for the record. If you want to pull that down. <laughs> That's what I have to do when I Kimberly go. Harding, 56 Florence Ave. Thank you. Um, again, the same thing just for uh, the board's edification, even though we got your resume, CV, et cetera, but also sure. everybody else um, watching at home. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I've been a, a longtime resident of Arlington. I've lived here longer than anywhere else, um, 28 years. And uh, I've long been involved in, uh, as a volunteer in Arlington for over 25 years in various capacities. And I'd like to continue to um, participate in uh, giving back to the community. And uh, arts and culture are, are a big passion of mine. So I'm 
hoping that I can uh, continue to help in that area. And I think this is a great time to be on the ACC and everything that Arlington's doing. And I can And they're meeting right now, so. <laughs> so um, we're going to get you back to that. Uh, uh, move approval by. Move approval. Mr. Second. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions or comments, Mr. Greeley? Uh, I'm trying to picture which house is 56 uh, Florence Ave. I was raised at 35 Florence Ave. Uh, well, currently it's bright blue. It's <laughs> Uh, it changes set. minute to minute. No, no, it's been blue, it's <laughs> been blue you know, for about eight years. You're it's between Appleton and Park Ave, though, correct? Yes, we're close to Park Ave. Yeah. Near the near the intersection, two houses in. So. Maybe you it, can Google World Map. It. Yeah, you can look. We we have a big lot. We have a big lot. <laughs> yeah. So. It used to be the Hoyts, I believe, but anyhow. That a long time ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, that, that's how long time ago I yeah, was at Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but for that reason and, and all of your qualifications, thank you for your willingness yeah. to serve. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We now have an appointment to the Disability Commission, term to expire January 31st, 2020. Karen Mathiason. Is Karen here? Yes, she's hey. here. How are you? Just name and address. I think you got the <laughs> roll of it. I'm Karen Mathias, and I live at 20 Hamilton Road, down at Spy Pond. Nice to see you. Um, and anything uh, that particularly dra draws you, the Disability Commission, anything you'd like to highlight? Um, well, I'm interested in the subject of disability because about 10 years ago, I developed Parkinson's disease. And um, I have been since then, you know, trying to tr not to trip over bricks and so forth, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've become very aware mm -hmm. of impediments to, um, to mobility. And so I'd like to do something about this. And I, th I think it's something I have some skills in doing. I practiced law for many, many years. Yes. And uh, I have also been an advisor to not-for-profit groups for, for many, many years. And I, I'm also in my church, I'm involved in pastoral care, uh, lay pastoral care, we, we minister to the, you know, to those that are grieving or ill. And I put all that together and I say, this seems to, to fit. I think you'll be a fantastic addition. Uh, motion by Mr. Full Carroll. Approval. Second. Seconded by Mr. Byrne. Mr. Greeley. Yes, uh, certainly endorsed 100%. Karen and I, uh, took a trip to Naga uh, back in 98, I think it was, no, 2008 rather. 2008. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne, any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Look forward to seeing you in the future. We have a, a transportation, <laughs> an appointment to Transportation Advisory Committee, TAC, uh, term to expire December 31st, 2017. Victor Rivas. Is Victor here? And? Yeah, he's coming out. Good evening. Name and address for the record. 46 uh, Hibbert Street, Victor Rivas. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm a about 11 year veteran of uh, the MBTA. I work, I work there, I led the uh, capital, the implementation of the capital investment program. And uh, now I'm doing mainly uh, research in the area of operations and finance. Uh, I'm very excited about working with the transportation, uh, uh, the TAC group. I've been working as a non-voting member and I see the fine work that they do there and, and, and the commitment of all the members. So I'm excited about this opportunity. Thank you. Move approval. Mr. Kiro. Second. Seconded by Mr. Greeley. And thank you so much for coming in and thank filling you. this unexpired term. Um, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Any further discussion or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Now we go to licenses and permits. Request wine and malt license, Harbini Co. Doing business as Nina Trattoria and Pizzeria, 1510 Mass Ave, Angelo Carbini. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. I represent Mr. Carbini and Carbini Company. Um, Mr. Carbini uh, has, is in the process 
of opening a uh, full service restaurant where Jimmy's Pizzeria was. But those of you who know Jimmy's Pizzeria, it's on the Lexington line. He's doing some extensive renovations there. I've been working with um, Mr. Carbini for several years now to find a location for him. He is delighted to be able to do this in Arlington. He lives in Arlington, his family is in Arlington, uh, and he's looking for a wine and malt license for the restaurant. Um, I do know uh, he filled this application out himself. He is not pledging the license. He did put down on page five that he was, he misunderstood what that meant, okay. so he is not pledging the license. Mm -hmm. Move approval subject to conditions as set forth. Moved by Mr. Second. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Um, any questions? If not, all those in favor? Um, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Mr. sorry Dunn. Ms. Mahan, I've got my regular. Oh, no. um, so have on terms of serving, the, uh, do you have a plan for uh, training your employees about uh, the under 21, uh, about checking ID and things like that? Yes, I do. Can you I tell am, me about it? Yeah, I'm certified, tip certified. And I've been in this uh, business for many, many years. And uh, uh, when I used to work on the cruise ship, very, very strict by the um, authorities. And uh, throughout all my uh, experience, I never had a single incident. And I intended to keep it that way. OK. The question I'm asking, though, in particular, is about how you're going to train your employees. Um, I, will, uh, I will have them to take the, the course, the TIP certified. And, and wherever I on, on duty on the floor, if I'm absent, um, they will have to be certified in order to, to, to operate the service, okay. to comply with, with, with the law. That sounds good. I want to tell you it's really important you stick with it because uh, when we find comp uh, restaurants that have violations, what generally mean what generally happens like or I shouldn't say generally what has often occurred is someone comes in and says we hi we somebody quit we hired somebody they were re re brand new we were really busy we didn't have time to train them and then they served someone who was underage and so I'm absolutely sure that on your first day you're going to check everybody's ID I'm really worried about you know year three when you have that new waiter that'll be the time when uh, the mistake happens and so I just want you to really think about that making sure that training program is good and consistent. Yes. Thank you. you. Any further questions, Mr. Carroll? I, I move approval with the um, the amendment to the application as as uh, indicated by council. Okay, uh, Mr. Greeley, will you take that as a friendly amendment? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I'm realize. Sure what it is. Um, she said on I page moved five. Subject to all conditions. That, that's no, no, a condition. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't Ms. realize. It was Mrs. O'Connor pointed out on page five he inadvertently checked yes. He will right. be pledging this business, and she wanted to correct that to reflect no. He's not pledging the license. So okay. with that, a friendly amendment. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne, with the friendly amendment by Mr. Carroll, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you for choosing Arlington. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we have a request, Common Victor, Cafe Nero Americas, doing business as Cafe Nero, 311 Broadway. My Michael Ford Deegan, owner. Mr. Deegan is not here. My name is Jay Gentile. I'm with uh, Cafe Nero Americas. I head up the operations in the United States. Okay. Um, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I've enjoyed your uh, your location in, on, I think, is it on Washington Street in, in Boston. The Millennium Place, uh, across from the Paramount. Yes, across from Paramount. Downtown exactly. Crossing, yeah. Yeah, my office is down there, and that's sometimes a lunch meeting. Uh, welcome to Arlington. Thank you so much. Uh, move approval, subject conditions. Second. A second. Okay, Mr. Byrne. Um, I do have a question. Um, I was going through uh, the packet. Have you been in touch with the health department? Um, it's under review. Everything's going under review now. It's for building okay. and health. Yeah. Perfect. I'm happy to hear it. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? If not... On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Greeley, all those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks for coming to Arlington. Thank you. Request for a change of doing business at DBA All Alcohol Cigar Restaurant Corp, 44 Mass Ave, RJ Sachar. Uh, sorry, I got thrown off. Uh, RJ Sachar, Director and Manager, Sing Saab Fine Italian Indian Cuisine. Yeah. Formerly Punjab. Just name and address for the record. Second, sorry. Your name and address, please. My my name is Ajay, and four 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 Massive in Arlington. Okay. So. Okay. 
So right. move approval, subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Carroll. Any, Mr. Dunn? Uh, did you hear my speech earlier about training? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, uh, it's definitely the thing that uh, when we see restaurants that have a problem with their license, it's very often because they didn't have a good consistent training program. Okay. So it's really important that you have one. Okay. That's all. Okay. For the alcohol. For the alcohol. Just yeah. making sure Mr. Dunn gave an example how yeah, because you're really good in the beginning, but further on down the line, a year, two, three years, because Arlington is very vigilant about checking to make sure there's no yeah. underage yeah. Um, serving of minors. So he was just saying, um, if you can put something in place that protects you to make sure that even if it's a busy night and someone helped you out at the last minute, uh -huh. they can't be serving alcohol until they pass your training program, whatever that is. Okay. Just, and that helps you, helps yes. us, and helps the town and the safety of the people, but that also helps you. Okay, because we are just changing the names of same, the employee are the same from the long time, okay. five years. Yeah, but, we, but we, you're now the new manager and director, right? Yes. That's, so that's why, we, this is our chance to kind of make sure we're, we're clear on both sides of the table. Okay. What, what we expect in, in terms of what you expect, that's all. Okay. We do it all the time. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Dunn. No, it's good, thank you. Okay, uh, any further questions? If not, on a motion by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, good thank luck. You, thank, you. thank you. Next, we have a stranger. <laughs> 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 Request Monotomy Grill and Tavern, late night event, December 31st, 2016 to January 1st, 2017. Billy, William A. Lyons, owner, Monotomy Grill and Tavern, 25 Mass Ave. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. just uh, in an effort to uh, just kind of keep the celebration in Arlington. So, what time do we call? Excuse me, Madam Chair. What time do we, do we last call? So we would start at like twelve thirty. Yeah. yeah. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Second. Grilly, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Questions or comments? I want to say uh, thank you because you've been before us for several years now and. It's always to ask for permission to run a successful event, and that's exactly what you've done. You've been extremely responsible and um, provided great service, not just th this particular night, but many nights, reunion time, et cetera. So I, I really want to applaud you as an owner and businessman for such a large establishment. Um, myself, personally, as well as the full board, you know, we've had a kind of bumpy road with sometimes with um, other similar uh, establishment or establishments, and um, that certainly hasn't touched you or plagued you at all. And I know how difficult that is, and that's because you have everything no, I, in place. I appreciate that. Okay. In yeah. fact, we're approaching three and a half years, so we're now being recertified for tips. Awesome. So. I didn't know there was recertification. Through, <laughs> we're going through the list. All right, that's good to hear. Thank, but thank you. you. Thanks, Billy. Motion. Uh, Motion by Mr. Grilly, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Good I to knew see you. you didn't need the speech. All right, thank you. <laughs> no. uh, request Tango Restaurant Late Night Event, December 31st, 2016, January 1st, 2017. Ricardo Mermet, owner. I'm his daughter. I'm <laughs> yeah. Say your name for the Alyssa record. Mermet. And, and uh, yep, I'm just basically the same as what Billy was asking for, just for our license to be extended for the night of New Year's Eve to let people celebrate the new year. Mr. Greeley? Same thing, last call about 12.30. Yes. Move approval. Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. And I believe you've done this for a couple of years also. Yes. In, in the same yep. praise from myself because um, I, I think it's oh, thank you. something we all take very seriously and all of us and my family being in the restaurant business, I know how hard it is on a large scale event Mm -hmm. um, with, uh, you know, it's different when you have a usual Thursday night customer, but sure. you've run this flawlessly and um, been very responsible, and oh. we, we really do appreciate that. Oh, well, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> On a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thank Good you. Luck. Request duet late night event, December 31st, 2016, January 1st, 2017. Wayne Dupre, owner duet 190 Mass Ave. Good evening. How are you? Just Good. how are you? Name and address for the record. Even Wayne Dupre, 190 Massachusetts Avenue. So when are you opening? 
Uh, well, that's the, I was going to say this is probably one of the more unique requests yeah. since we're not <laughs> even open yet. Yeah. Um, it's which, extra late yeah. hours. <laughs> Exactly. Um, we're really looking forward to be able to um, sort of announce the opening date within the next seven to ten days. Um, that's what we're targeting, so hence the presence tonight, um, just to sort of be prepared for that occasion. Um, but, but very similar to, I think, what you recently heard, 1230, I'm just trying to, um, our, our normal uh, time we need to have everyone out is noon, uh, sorry, noon. Uh, midnight, um, that wouldn't be great for business probably. Midnight, but uh, we're just looking to extend it for one more hour and 12.30, last call. So moved. Moved by Mr. Greer. Second. Seconded by Mr. Carroll. Okay, you heard everything we said before, but this is your first time, so good luck. Um, on a motion by Mr. Greer, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. He got the speech two months ago when he got his first license. <laughs> oh. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. Marie, is anybody signed up? Is anybody here for Citizens Open Forum? If not, I won't read the whole preamble and go right on to agenda item 20, cultural plan update, Adria Arch from our Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Just name and address for the record. Hi, Adria Arch, uh, 41 Mary Street. Good to see Hello. you. <laughs> so, yes, I'm here uh, without my APA hat on, but with a cultural yes. commission hat on. Uh, just to update you on what's going on with us, you all know that we were awarded um, <clears throat> technical assistance funding of $25,000 from MAPC um, to help us create a cultural plan. Um, so that's very exciting, and we've been working very hard with uh, Jenny Ray in town planning um, to make that happen, and some really great people with um, MAPC. So we're in the process of um, a survey, which we want as many people as possible to uh, go ahead and fill out. The survey is linked on the town planning page on the town website. So if every, anyone who's watching this hasn't yet filled that out, you can go ahead and do that. Um, we've got over 400 surveys already filled out, so that's really going to help us get a sense of what people are interested in for more arts and culture or to um, uh, make it more um, visible, to um, sort of coordinate it all, and uh, to move forward with a plan you know, from experts that really can help us figure out what, what the next steps are. Um, we also have uh, been having a bunch of uh, focus groups, which has, has been really interesting, and we're inviting people. Uh, the first people who have come to the focus groups are uh, people that are involved in the arts. We hope to open that up to the entire town, and we have two meetings uh, planned in the spring, one in March and one in May, that will um, engage people who are not directly involved in the arts, but people who are interested in or who I uh, just want to know more about it to come and uh, tell tell us their thoughts about what they'd like to see or what they see happening with arts and culture in Arlington. So that's basically it. But do you have any questions for me that I maybe didn't answer? Um, do you have a mo motion to receive the report, Mr. So moved. Mr. Kiro, seconded by Second. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn. Uh, did we send this one out on the town alerts? Do we plan on? I believe it has, but yes, we should but not, do it again. Yes, we should do it again. Yeah, yeah it was earlier. It was okay. maybe um, yeah, late November, I yeah, think. Yeah, that sounds right. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Byrne? Um, yeah, just, um, I'm actually, I've, my full-time job, I work at MAPC. Ah. And um, <laughs> I know that uh, Jen and Jen Emily and the, the, you know, the team that's working on this is really ah. excited about it. I know. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, they, they um, have loved the focus group so far, and I know they um, can't wait to come back. Great, that's really funny. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Small one? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, with that, on a motion, move received by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? You and thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Adrian. Agenda item 21, request two spaces on street overnight parking at 17 Pelham Terrace. William Choi, Christina Matthews. Are either of those individuals here? A motion to take, uh, Mr. Dunn? I'm, act base uh, I'm, I'm willing to make a motion to uh, recommend no action based on the, the written police Second. recommendation. Motion and no action by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions, comments? Um, I would just say ditto to everything that yep. you said we have. Mr. Dunn? And, and if they you know, come back and they say, oh, I really wanted to be here and they want to put it on the agenda, I'd certainly be happy to hear it. Motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no action. Agenda item 22, vote referral 
of Leslie Ellis Traffic Review to TAC. Ted, how are you? Name and address for the record, even though we know who you are. Uh, Ted Wilson, um, Leslie. An address, uh, Leslie Ellis. 34 Winter Streets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, um, president of Schools for Children. Um, thank you for letting me be here tonight. And uh, I don't know if you've heard, but um, I've announced my retirement from yes. Schools for Children, effective June 30th. So this is my chance to thank Swanson. you for 30 oh. years of uh, supportive action as we've tried to build a, uh, some, some important services in, in Arlington. Um, it's been a, a trip. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to getting a few more things done before I, I head off into the sunset. This being um, the summer, as you know, we're, we're moving Leslie Ellis out of the Gibbs so that we can get the, the Gibbs in play for Arlington uh, students again. Um, so for what, what that means for us is that we are moving Dearborn Academy to a facility we're renting in Newton. Mm. They're going to leave in the middle of June. Um, so the work is going there to get ready for them. And then we're going to move all of Leslie Ellis's stuff into the gym on Winter Street. We're going to use the Brackett School for our summer program. <laughs> we're going to use the house we bought on Foster Street for our uh, offices. And there's going to be a lot of activity um, in Winter Street over the summer to get ready for a September opening. So a lot of stuff happening, as you can well imagine. The, the knitting together all of those elements is pretty critical. And the things that the two things that strike me as important is making sure that we do our, our prep work in the area of traffic and parking. So that's because it's, it's a different school, it's still a school, but it's, it's different than what Dearborn uh, has been providing in the way of services. A different number of staff, you know, many more staff at Dearborn than will be at Leslie Ellis. So that'll take a little bit of the pressure off. But um, different number of students, different, different way of entering school and, and the whole nine yards. So it just felt to me like if we could, if we could figure out a way to partner on doing some of that prep work uh, around traffic and parking, that that would be a good idea. So that's, that's the nature of the request and I'm um, happy to be involved at whatever level we can to uh, help it work. Mr. Greeley. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for your excellence and how you have conducted yourself uh, always with this board and, and other town boards. But uh, help me understand the difference between is Leslie Ellis, Ellis busier? I mean, what, is, what kind of traffic issues are you seeing? Well, uh, give me an example, Ted, if you so, would. So Dearborn students come from 45 different cities and towns, right? So they come in the vans, they pull up at 8.15, 8.30, they wait, bell rings, and they all go in, right? So they approach on Winter Street, which is a busy uh, place, and they come on Oxford Street, um, uh, we pull into the, the parking lot down there. So it's, it's, it's that kind of action for that group of kids. Um, Leslie Ellis um, serves kindergarten, well, pre-K through grade eight, right? So some, and mostly Arlington mm -hmm. and, and neighboring towns. So for us to move from the Gibbs to Winter Street allows us to actually keep serving that population and makes it so that we can have a chance of, of making right. it work, right? So, the very youngest children come into Leslie Ellis and they, you know, similar time frame, um, but uh, you're bringing your, your kindergarten child or your three-year-old, you're gonna park, you're gonna walk in, you're gonna say hi to the teachers, and you're gonna head out. So there's gonna be a little bit of a difference in the way of, of um, accessing the school. Once the drop-off has happened, it'll all revert to, to being pretty much the same. Um, the other big difference is that because of the intense services <coughs> at Dearborn, we have close to 80 staff. So many of those are, you know, there's a lot maybe services, 25 to 30 of those. So everybody else parks for the day on the adjoining Oxford Street and Winter Street. Leslie Ellis has maybe 30 staff. So a dramatic difference in terms of the number of people actually being there all day. So there's kind of the two components, right? Mm -hmm. Parking all day and then the, the transition the morning and the afternoon transition. So it'll be a different, uh, you know, Leslie Average, Ellis yeah. has maybe 175 uh, kids. Um, some of those will be walking, riding bikes if they're the older, you know, if you've got children in that you know, almost middle school age, you know, you, you, sh you roll up and they want you to let them out three blocks before, you know, so, um, so it's, <coughs> it's that kind of, a, it's kind of a qualitative difference. Um, 
more than anything else. And there's some things, you know, when I, we met with um, Howard Muse and um, uh, Officer Elizabeth. Ratto, um, and just looked around the space, you know, is there, you know, there's a semi-circular drive on Winter Street, you know, is there some way to, mm -hmm. to, to, to do some change that allows some of those cars to come off and, you know, cycle around. So we just want to get creative. We recognize that whatever school is there, it's going to be an impact at some level on the neighborhood. Uh, we want to be in dialogue with them and, and, uh, and have a plan that, that people can support right off the bat. So there's no, there's no blocking <laughs> as we try to get ready for this. Right, and I just see this you, as a progression. You met with Elizabeth yeah. Jones, yeah. Howard Muse, Officer Roto, the town manager, and I think it was suggested to you that to ask this board to for formally refer this to TAC. Right. Right. So, um, motion to refer to TAC by Mr. Greeley, seconded if, by- If Howard doesn't give yeah. me a dirty look or anything back there. <coughs> <laughs> so move that we refer this to TAC. Okay, seconded by Mr. Second. Done, uh, any questions from my colleagues? Yeah, since Howard is here, I was wondering if we just wanted to, like, uh, I just briefly want to hear, like, just make sure that he's happy getting it. Yeah. I mean, oh, it says it. That uh, was in my motion. I asked if he was angry. He said no. All right. Okay. Thank oh, you. No, it's. It, it, I actually, I have a Mr. similar question anyway. Right. Mr. Byrne. Um, it, it, this is a. It's not town-owned property, right? So, so this is actually. It seems like it could be a new precedent that we're setting by having the committee go and that's not on like you know a municipally owned road. And I think that is something that uh, um, we should probably you know. And not that I'm not. I'm, I'm still comfortable, of course, sending this to it because, you know, I think TAC has uh, agreed to, but I, I think that we should be, you know, cognizant of that. Um, and, you know, I hope that, I don't know if that will potentially, you know, open up the floodgates to, you know, other, you know, partners in the community coming in and, you know, asking for help for an already overwhelmed board. No, no, I definitely understand that, but I think perhaps, I know in the past, sort of for a coal biling, AC Fidelity House, sometimes we have had a little bit of a meeting of the minds, especially around um, safety, drop off, things like that. So maybe if, if we're establishing any trend, maybe it's around that. Um, but, but I definitely share your concerns, but I know when we kind of have straight a little bit, it's usually been around um, a school or a facility that provides services to children. And, um, no, yeah, it makes sense. Like, I don't like think it has say, happened since I've been here, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Mr. Chapdelaine. Yeah, just if I may, to that point, I, th I think that is a, a very good point, but I, I would say the impacts are on the residents on those streets, mm -hmm. which are town streets, so I, I do think it's it's more than justifiable to say that, that tax working on it so that the neighborhood impacts are managed, mm -hmm. you know, even though it is on private property. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to speak to this, Mr. Rodosha? Yeah. Briefly, sure, briefly. <laughs> Because we're just referring this to TAC. That's all. Name and address. Uh, Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. I'm also a property owner on Winter Street. And I, I just dug this out yesterday. And, uh, you know, they talk about the planned traffic and parking changes. Uh, where can I see that? Is there a place I can see this plan of changes? It doesn't exist. No, that, that's... That's what well, this is about. This is about. what this is about. Have to work on that. Okay, so. With TAC. Okay, how do I stay close to TAC and understand what we're doing? Follow their okay. Don't say hi to Howard. <laughs> okay, so that, that, that's it. Okay, all right, fine. No problem. They have public meetings. Okay. Yes. So I, I would anticipate that perhaps, I know you had one last spring with the, I believe with the Winter Street and Oxford Street, um, residents you cite that in your letter yes. perhaps after you go through this process and you're at some sort of a first phase you could ha have that meeting again perhaps in this in the spring again with the winter in Oxford uh, I, I didn't know about that I guess I don't know maybe you just drop something off with the residents mm -hmm. so, okay all right so that's why okay. I didn't say it okay, okay. thanks thanks Okay, and a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn to refer to TAC. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We have for approval from our traffic and parking un unit, Officer Corey Rateau, amendment <coughs> to Schedule 1, traffic rules and order. Is there a motion? Move approval. Move approval Second. by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any questions or comments? <coughs> if not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous vote. Oh, just I think Bob waved his hand in back. Sorry. Did you want to, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. 
Just, again, name and address for the record. Bob Rudosh, I still live on Columbia Road, I think, if my <laughs> wife didn't lock the door. Um, I was involved, I think, in instigating this because um, I was a victim to the situation down there on Mystic Street since it was striped. And what it was, what was happening down there, there was a car that was parked there all day, all night. I mean, mm -hmm. I see it in the morning at 7 o'clock with ice on the windshield and so forth. And what it would do is two lanes coming up. People who want to get in the right lane couldn't, and you get stuck in the left, or the left lane would back up into the right. And so I think the no parking signs would be great. So I appreciate you moving on on this thing. Thank you. And, and thank you for bringing that to our attention. We had a similar circumstance on Mill Street, and I think it was the bowlers that said, you know, the two lanes coming up, the parking from 7 to 9 <coughs> held everybody up. So I, I do appreciate you doing that. That's yeah. going to help a lot of people. I also had spoken on this uh, traveling Mystic Street every day. <laughs> if there's cars that park there, it really does block up traffic badly. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Radosha. Did we already vote on that? Or? Yeah, I think we did. Sort of. On a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those yes. opposed, unanimous vote. Correspondence received. Move receipt by? So moves. Mr. Byrne, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, aye. Any questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Wait a minute. I want to go back on this Mr. One. Greeley, <laughs> new no, business, Mrs. Korpelka. <clears throat> Attorney Hine? None. Manager a few short pieces. I want to thank um, the town's water division. We had, I believe it was four water main breaks on yes. Saturday and a sewer backup. It was that, uh, you know, talk to Mike Rademacher about it, that first cold day, the ground shifts, and, and that's when, you know, things start to happen. So it was particularly bad. There was three breaks in East Arlington, Cleveland Street, Randolph, and the intersection uh, at Dunkin' Donuts near Pond Lane. And I saw the guys out there working, cold day, windy day, but they... They got it fixed, so my thanks to them. Uh, could I just say, too, that um, I don't know if it was on the Arlington list, if I got it privately or something else. One uh, woman, Arlington resident, said she came out of, I think she was in the movies or somewhere, saw where her car ha had been parked. It was a big sinkhole, and it wasn't there. And I think she had a child or two, and I'll, I'll forward you this email. Um, she <coughs> said she walked up you know, to the Arlington police officer just dreading that, you know, trying to find out where her car got towed to in Cambridge or up in Arlington Heights. And she was so grateful. And she did have at least one child, if not two, because she said, I envisioned, you know, I was going to try to figure out how to walk, hop on the bus. And they said, well, we moved it about 10 blocks away for, for you. It's right down there. And, and she said, being a mom or a dad or anybody that's had kids, that you're on the verge of a meltdown, because if one more thing goes wrong, and she just was so grateful that they went out of their way to, because um, they could have just had it towed. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure I forward that email to the town manager so you can pass along the yeah. thanks and I'll forward it to Mrs. Kropelka for the rest of the board, but I cut you off. No, no, I'm glad you shared that. Uh, and then the only other piece was I just wanted to mention that I had the um, pleasure of attending the uh, fire departments, the fire unions annual holiday party with Chair Mahan, uh, Marie Kropelka and Ashley Marr from the board, uh, board's office and it was a very nice, uh, nice event. I was glad to be there, so just wanted to share that. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Uh, just one piece that to uh, remind everybody that uh, December 21st, 7.30 in Town Hall, uh, the Selectones, along with the Arlington High School Jazz Band and the Arlington High School Madrigal Singers, and Charles Lyons, one of the original members of the Selectones, has agreed to return. So he will also be performing that evening. What's the solo you're doing? <laughs> I... I wouldn't want to break the microphone. <laughs> I would. It's a free. It's a free. Uh, people are welcome. We will arrange transportation for seniors, uh, but uh, donations will be accepted for the Arlington Food Pantry and the Arlington High School Music Program. Doug be just, there. Doug just asked if people would pay if there was a charge. That, we'll say that again. <laughs> Doug just asked if people would pay if there was a charge. <laughs> well, it sounds like that's someone who just signed so, up for the select homes. So, <laughs> would, you, would you say that was making fun of me? <laughs> would you say that was a charge? I wouldn't want to visit that on the select homes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Grilly. Anything else? Thank you. No, I'm all set. Thank Mr. you. Um, we had a parking implementation and governance committee um, meeting late last week. Um, and we heard um, from a you know a few different people, um, sources around town, that they weren't particularly happy that when they got to a meter, 
and 15 minutes, you know, part of the free 15 minutes were already taken up. Um, they felt like they should be able to hit a button and then get a full 15 minutes. Yeah. And we have actually reset all of the meters to do that. Yeah. Um, so if you are, um, if you do want the free 15 minutes, you can have it regardless of the timing. Um, which, so we were very happy to make that change. Um, and our new economic development coordinator did uh, attend our last meeting. And she said that she was getting uh, great feedback from the stores already about the turnover that's being caused in the center. So we're very happy to uh, see that. I just want to congratulate him and the committee. I have heard nothing but positive from people, seriously. I, have, I got one question, which I think I knew the answer, but I want to clarify just for sure. Is there an additional fee if you use a credit card? The minimum fee. It's a one dollar minimum transaction fee. It's not. It's not an additional fee. It's just you have to buy a one dollar transaction. Thank you. There was some confusion on that point, but mm, like, the, the, yes. But so it's good to clarify. And actually, one. I when I used one of the meters the other day, I um, paid for an hour and fifteen minutes. But if you actually hit the fifteen minutes, and then you can just pay for an hour. <laughs> so keep go. that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I should keep quarters in my pocket. Said <laughs> <laughs> it, Mr. Burns. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And uh, honestly, on that prompt change, because as you were starting to say the first part of that mm. sentence, I'm saying, gee, I just went to the post office the other day, and it only had four, and I got the 15. So I didn't even know there was a problem. You solved it for me. I'm happy. To, we're very uh, ahead of the game in oh, that committee. That's amazing. Uh, uh, Mr. Carroll. No, 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 no. Mr. Dunn. Uh, two things. One, um, the town manager mentioned two weeks ago or whatever it was, thank you to the various crews for putting up uh, the, the holiday decorations. Oh, yeah. And um, I hadn't had a chance to appreciate them yet. And I have since appreciated them. And the town, in fact, does look absolutely fantastic. And I've had more than one person um, remark on it. So, uh, you know, I said, you know, thank you before, but now I've seen it. So now I really can say hey, thank you. I think <laughs> Sincere, it's excellent. Right, yeah. Exactly. Just and the chamber certainly deserves credit Thank for what they've yes. done at the Jefferson yes. Cutter yeah. area there. Yes, I am meant to. You're really adding on to everyone's new business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did I tell you? Well, I keep really, it's not going to get us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're I, done. But actually, I really, I really appreciate it, it because brilliant. I had meant to mm. thank them as well, and I and I forgot, so I appreciate that. Um, second is uh, it's that time of year, and no, I don't mean the holidays. I mean I've pulled papers. I'm running for re-election. Uh, voters willing, see you for another three years. Thank you. You're a credit to this board. All right, I just added that. That was a little <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping track oh, now. <laughs> okay, and uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn by so Mr. Grilly, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous vote. See you in a week. <laughs>